straight out of camp into a pack of wild dogs. There's some Impala up ahead. This could be fun. Okay, we just heard contact calls from more wild dogs, or at least another wild dog. Sounds like off by the airstrip. So the packs run off to join that dog, so they've obviously split on a hunt. Okay, so we've all raced down to the Sand River, this beautiful beach behind us, in the hope that they come over the river. I think this is the pack that's heading back towards their den just to the northwest of Londolozi. A wonderful confusion of a riverside wild dog chase. One's chased a bush buck over that way, disappeared. The rest are kind of milling about in the thickets. We are bogged down in the river, so they're probably all going to cross in beautiful sunlight and we're going to be stuck. So, great, great morning. <laughs> so this is one of those extractions that needs a tractor. Problem is now Guy and Sean are coming to make fun of us. This isn't going to be pleasant. <laughs> Twice in what, 10 days? <laughs> Team <laughs> it's the laughter that hurts the most. <laughs> All for the shot. Didn't even get the shot. Sometimes it just doesn't work out. <laughs> okay, Sean and I have come up right to the north of Londolozi. We stopped briefly to listen just to hear if we can hear any alarm calls. And we heard the sound of, we think, leopards fighting. So now we stopped again a little, we drove quickly to get a little bit closer. And we've heard them growling in the bushes up ahead, so now we're going in pretty thick in here. But if they keep, uh, keep up the aggression, they'll keep making noise, keep growling, and hopefully we'll be able to find them. Okay, we've got visual of a leopard up in a tree. Okay, female in the tree, yeah, what else? I think it looks like there's hyenas at the base. Hyenas, maybe there's a kill. No, there's another leopard in the oh, there's two leopards in the tree, two leopards in the tree. Looks like the Makam Sava female. She's been treed by a young male who we're still trying to identify. And there's an impala kill in the tree. Most likely the Makam Sava female made the kill. And then the male's gone up and stolen it. There's a hyena at the base, hoping for scraps to fall down, which is certainly possible if the leopards are fighting. We've had a bit of a look now, and this is, uh, there's still so much aggression here. It's the son of the Emsagwen female. Um, he's a young male from Malamala, who became independent at the end of last year. And yeah, it's the Makom Sava female that he's robbed. So one of the reasons that there's so much aggression here is he's a completely new male on the scene. If it was a male she was familiar with, more than likely, he'd climb up, grab the kill, either start feeding or just take it to another tree. But because he's an unfamiliar male, he doesn't know her, she doesn't know him, there's a lot of back and forth growling, they're snarling at each other, they're, there's still interaction, he'll have a go at her. She's 
she's pretty clever. She's gone right to the edge of the tree to the thinner branches that would be less likely to support his weight because she's half his size. Even though he's a young male, he's still significantly bigger than her. Yeah, it's a shame he's, he's not getting a lot of opportunity to feed. He'll put his head down, but he keeps remembering, oh, there's a, hang on, there's another leopard I don't know behind me, so that he'll turn and snarl. I mean, this is an incredible sighting. Two leopards in one tree with a kill. There's a hyena at the base sniffing around. He, the hyenas, I think, might get lucky here because there's, the stomach is dangling down, hanging by a thread. Now, I think in the, if there's any more commotion, it may well fall, and the hyena will get a free meal. More than likely, the male will just end up coming down the tree, but sometimes it'll take the whole day. He won't want to leave the kill while she's up there. He might not move it to a different tree. It's already in place and he's unfamiliar with the area. He doesn't want to take the risk of dragging meat around. So I think he's probably going to stay up there and feed. There's a quite a high chance that if we come back this afternoon, they'll still be here. So we had to go back to camp quickly, but we've nipped back out now to the same spot with the leopards. They're both still up in the tree. Males come a little bit further down, and there's no sign of the kill, so we can only presume that the small bit that was left, he must have dropped, and the hyenas finished it off. There's seven hyenas that we can count milling around here, obviously brought in by the sound of the commotion. There's no real reason for the male to stay here anymore. He's a little bit too young to mate. We think the Makamsava female is pregnant anyway, so she wouldn't want to mate. So most likely he'll come down, he'll trot off, she'll wait for him, to get a bit of distance, then she'll come down and probably go in the opposite direction. Well, that's it, they both came down. It's now almost 11 o'clock. So that was a good four hours she was stuck up there. They have both gone in different directions now, and I think uh, that's it, but that was an incredible morning. Jeepers, it's been raining leopards for the last couple of days. Update is the Nsebu Pride have just killed a warthog. I can hear the squealing even above the engine from probably 300 meters. So I'm just trying to get there so we get a bit of the action. So from the looks of it, it was a very small warthog. It doesn't go very far between over 20 lions. And they're just kind of finishing off the, the scraps now. Just down the way here, only about 50 meters off, is a big herd of elephants. The elephants have heard the lions and they've smelt them and they can smell the blood from the warthog kill. A couple of small calves in the herd. And they may take exception to all these goings on, so what we're hoping for, action-wise, is that these eddies come and chase the lions away. So it's amazingly peaceful now. We've got. Africa's biggest mammal, well, a herd of them all feeding behind this pride of lions. Whoop, no, cancel that. There's some trumpeting going, oh no, they're moving back towards the way the kill is now. just behind Pete's vehicle over there. One of the young lions is still trying to feed on some scraps of a warthog and the elephants aren't too happy with it. The rest of the pride moved off to a distance where the Ellies are not too concerned about them. 
I hope now that the kill's finished is that the pride gets up and gets moving. So yeah, let's keep fingers crossed. So one of the important things they teach you when guiding is when to wrap it up. And I think now is probably that time. They're walking straight into what is an absolute disaster of a block to drive in. It's just rocks and thickets and hidden stumps in the long grass. I mean, it's bad enough driving in there in the day when you can see what you're doing, but after dark, which it's quickly getting to be now, nightmare. So, yeah, I think we're into diminishing returns here. The chances of seeing something epic, fairly small. Chances of serious vehicle issues and sense of humor failures fairly high so we'll let them go and we will come and look for them in the morning okay huge news and we're very unlikely to see anything here but we've seen a serval i'm going to try and get a shot of it in the spotlight it's in the long grass i haven't seen one of these in about six years so this is pretty epic Hundred percent the best serval sighting I've ever had. That's trumped the lion sighting by a country mile. Very rare creatures. We don't see many of them. There are more of them here than we think, but they inhabit this grassland where it's difficult to spot them. They're mainly nocturnal, so we're very lucky to bump into this one just at dusk as we left the lions, and it's been unbelievably relaxed. But yeah, this is wildly exciting. I mean, like the lions, I don't want to. Put them down but we see lions fairly often here even you know the ensevo pride a big pride is magnificent to see but this serval this is probably my best sighting in months i mean this is very 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 special sean uh, in the driver's seat suddenly shouted honey badger honey badger and i looked around normally it's just a fleeting glimpse we hardly ever see them and sean said no no right in front of us I could only just see its head pop around and then all of a sudden start scratching away at the tree. So I thought it was going after something. We could only see its upper half of its body. We realized that it was actually stuck. We then thought, okay, well, what do we do? Do we intervene? Do we try and help it out? Driving off knowing that it'll be left behind there just didn't sit quite well with me. No, we definitely have to try and save this honey badger as risky as it was. Try and dig this guy out without losing a limb. What we did is, is got a blanket and dropped the blanket carefully over it. Immediately it calmed down and the growling stopped. As we were digging, we then could see that it was actually stuck in a little V in the tree of the roots and in the ground. So we thought if we just dig underneath it, we'll be able to free it and then hopefully it can get out and run away. After about 20, 25 minutes of digging, we pulled the blanket off and tried to let the, let the honey badger get out by itself. But it was just so physically exhausted and we could see from the scratch marks on the base of the tree that it had been there for maybe even a day. And then we thought, if we manage to set this honey badger free, it's in a lot of pain and very dehydrated. So let's give it some water. So we used the, the shovel we poured the water on that and immediately from being this ferocious, aggressive little animal, it was completely, almost unaware of us being there and was just lapping up all of this water from the spade. So it must have been close to a litre that it finished. It would be like us drinking, who knows, about 10 litres in one go. It must have been so dehydrated, it was amazing to see how much it needed to take in. We then thought, okay, right, now it's at least as hydrated or partly hydrated, let's continue digging. 
I wanted to try and just grab hold of the honey badger behind the nape of the, the neck and pull it free, but that's not a good idea. So we dug even further and we had pretty much freed its entire rump or its back from, from the ground. So we thought, okay, that's as much as we're going to go. We're not going to be able to dig any further. So we used the blanket to try and entice it out. So it would grip on and with its claws and actually bite the blanket. We used that as a little sort of tug rope to, to pull it free. On the third attempt, that eventually worked and it sent us running back to the vehicle expecting the honey badger to come charging after us. They've been known to go after lions or hold their own against lions. Pete and I were quite terrified that it'll come after us once we freed it. Luckily, as we ran for the vehicle, the blanket actually dropped over the honey badger's back, gave us time to get away and it slowly crept out from under the blanket and just trotted away along the road. Yes. Yes! You could see its legs were a little bit wobbly. It probably had low blood supply over the last two days. They're incredibly tough animals, and I'm sure it's been through a lot worse before. Nice, we're probably thinking into it a bit too much, but it almost felt like the honey badger was really grateful for our help that evening. That was awesome. It was probably one of my best ever experiences at Londolozi.